Pranam friends. Today's lab is about set IAM policy granting a user full permissions to use Cloud Shell, that too in public network. All the instructions for this lab are given in the website www.multicloudrishi.com. So let us go to the website. For today's lab, we have to go to OCA Cloud and under the guided hands on labs, you can find this one, set IAM policy. Kindly click it. And these are the instructions. So let us start our lab. Make sure you have logged into your uh, free tier account as a default tenancy account user or as a cloud account administrator. So the task one is about understanding the scenario first. If you remember in our previous OCA hands-on lab, we have created a free tier account. Then we created an emergency user account and then we created a user with administration permission to use one compartment. So with the default tenancy user, that is the free tier root user, we actually created a emergency user. Then we created a user with admin privileges for a single compartment. So this means the default tenancy user has given all the admin privileges to this user by means he can use any resource within that compartment which he is related to. But this user is reporting to us that he is unable to access the cloud shell and it is showing a policy error. And this is the screenshot which he sent us, he has sent us. So let us see what the missing policy error message says about. So this is the policy error statement. It is saying you are not authorized to access cloud shell. The tenancy admin must add a policy to grant you access so it means this default user must add a policy to this user which gives this user the rights to use the cloud shell in public network so let us start the lab so before start of this lab make sure you scroll down to this web page and uh, open all these reference document which i have given you with this reference document alone we are going to do this lab so let us start seeing tasks one by one now let us try to see the error message in live so i have logged into the user account which showed the error actually now i'll so now let us go ahead and click cloud shell what i'll see and you can see that the cloud shell is preparing and it shows the error message you can see that uh, the policy is missing so the cloud shell needs a separate policy. Okay, now let us uh, close this and uh, log out of this account and uh, log in, in uh, with our uh, free tier tenancy user account and let us try to set the policy. Now I have logged out of the new user account and I logged in as the default tenancy administrator account. So we will go again into identity and security and let us click the policies. You can see this is the demo one policy which we created and there is one single policy which we created which says allow group the group name is this demo group to manage all resources in the compartment of the demo uh, compartment name is demo compartment one. So this is a correct uh, sentence uh, policy statement, but even it says this all resources can be uh, handled by this uh, demo group member of demo group one. But we have seen that uh, that uh, user is unable to um, create or access the is unable to access the cloud shell. So let us go in search of the solution for it. Now let us see. Uh, okay, now let us see that allow group demo this one. So it is like allow group admins. So the group name we have is demo one group to manage all resources in compartment. 
demo compartment one, which we, which is what here in ours. So this statement looks so good. And uh, the explanation also says to specify all resources in the compartment, we have to use this. So even though we are not getting the result. So what to do for that? So when we go and search and study about Cloud Shell, Cloud Shell says that to get started with Cloud Shell, you need to grant a user access to the Cloud Shell through IAM policy. Okay. In each service in Cloud Shell integrates with IAM authentication authorization part. Each service in Oracle infrastructure integrates with the IAM and or all interfaces. Yes. To allow the user to access Cloud Shell manage public network, you need to grant users through policy. Grant user access through policy. Okay. So to use uh, Cloud Shell, you must give the required type of access to the policy written with the administrator in tenancy root compartment. Yes, we are in the root compartment now. We uh, have logged into the root compartment. Okay, whether you are using console with, if you try to perform action and get a message that you don't have permission. Yes, that the same message we got. Okay, and uh, they have said how to give that uh, policy they have given uh, some example like this here but uh, the one thing which raises concern is cloud shell does not support policy at compartment level only at tenancy level but here we know that uh, according to our uh, image uh, all we need is uh, only for only one compartment to be needed that is for demo compartment one we don't uh, don't want uh, our user to access everything in the tenancy. But here they have said, if you want Cloud Shell, Cloud Shell policy should not be written in compartment level. It can only be written in tenancy level. The resource name for Cloud Shell is Cloud Shell. So, okay, this is nothing. So uh, they are saying that uh, to, uh, to denote that Cloud Shell, you have to write Cloud hyphen Shell because the resource name is Cloud hyphen Shell. Okay, so first let us explore what this says and let us go for our next one. So if we go for the common policies and we search for the common policies for Cloud Shell, we get this. Let us create a deploy manage functions and application using Cloud Shell. Ability to create deploy manager for OCA function is included. This statement gives you groups. Okay, whether to create policy in tenancy so that access is easily granted to Type of access is this much. Where to create the policy? In tenancy, so that the access is easily granted to all compartments by way of uh, policy inheritance to reduce the scope of access to just a resource in particular compartment. You can specify compartment instead of tenancy for more privacy statement. Look, they are contradicting here, right? They are saying that Cloud Shell does not support policies at a compartment level. Now they are saying that if you want to write a compartment level, you can write in compartment level. Don't no need to write for the total tenancy. So what actually is the solution is the second line. Because they said that if you want to write compartment, you can write it in compartment level. But however, to use Cloud Shell, to manage repos, to read objects, all these definitions, your verbs, you know, must always be scoped to the tenancy. So what they are saying is, if your tenancy, uh, your policy has a statement where it says, you know, look, to use Cloud Shell, to use Cloud Shell, then this should be written only with tenancy, not to be scoped for a compartment. Okay. Second, day, to read, to manage repos, to here, to manage repos to read object storage namespace. So these three should be scoped to only the tenancy, not to the compartment. All these things can be written for a particular compartment, like this log in a family in a compartment. So, so far we can take like this. And uh, the thing what we want is uh, to group function to use Cloud Shell in tenancy. This is what we want, okay? So even though 
we want our user to use the cloud shell within the compartment, we can only write the policy in the scope with tenancy because they have said, however, to use cloud shell, you must always scope it to tenancy only. Okay, so let us go ahead and uh, add this policy. Edit policy statement, add another statement. I copy this one and I put it here. Allow group functions developers. So our group's name is demo group. Okay. So I will, yeah, replace this. Okay. Allow group demo demo one group to use cloud shell in tenancy. Let us see what uh, it says when we scope it for compartment. Huh? So as an experiment, what we'll do is we will scope it to the compartment and we'll see whether it shows any error or not. Oh, it shows no error and it is you know, it is. it got added as if there is no problem with this. I don't know how. So what we can do is we can go back into the newly created user and we can check whether the cloud shell works. So I don't know how these documents are, you know, they don't explain well. Anyways, trial and error is a matter. So what I do is I sign out from this. Policy is successfully added. So, and now uh, login as the user who re reported the problem. I'll uh, log in into that account and we'll see whether the problem resolved. Is. So, we are doing this trial and error so that you could understand the scope of the policies very clearly. Okay, it is worth. Okay, now we are inside it. Let us go ahead and uh, okay, now we are inside it. So now let us go ahead and click Cloud Shell. What I'll see. Da -dun, da -dun. Policy missing. You are not authorized to access Cloud Shell. The tenancy admin must apply policy grant access to here. Retry. It is saying same. Let us exit it. Let us go sign out. So now we have seen that even at the tenancy account, we have uh, set the policy to the scope of compartment. The policy is not working. So now we have to go back into the tenancy account and let us set the policy scope to uh, the whole tenancy itself. Okay. So now let us log in as the default tenancy user and uh, reset the policy. Let us go ahead and change the policy, okay? So let us go ahead. Let us click identity and security. Let us go for the policies. Ah, uh, demo policy and we see the policy. Is there anything wrong with this policy? Nothing. Use cloud cell. And it also said to use cloud cell. Here also it says to use cloud cell internet. Okay, so what we do is uh, we will change this uh, edit policy statement. We will delete this one. And we will add again. And this time we will add it properly. This time we will add this properly with the scope of tenancy. Okay, group functions. Uh, the group name should be changed. The group change. Okay. Allow group demo group to use cloud shell in tenancy. Okay. So allow group group name to use cloud shell in tenancy. Cloud hyphen shell. Everything in small letter. Okay. We have done it. Let us save the changes. And let us refresh it. Okay. 
Okay, now it is there. So let us sign out from this uh, tenancy account and uh, let us log in into the user account and we'll see whether the problem got fixed. Now let us log in into the user account. Okay, we are inside. Let us uh, refresh it one more time. Now let us click Cloud Shell. Now it should come. We'll see. So now we can see that it shows a message called service is temporarily unavailable. So it is not showing the previous error message. It's showing a different message. So the reason for this message, I will show you from the document. So when we go to the document, we can see that they have said whenever you do a change in the policy, it will take uh, 24 hours to take effect. So you need to restart your cloud shelf on the action menu immediately. But uh, if you remember, we haven't restarted our cloud shell after setting the policies. So what we do is we will uh, sign into the tenancy account and uh, we will restart the cloud shell from that account. OK, so let us sign out of this account now. So let us sign out of this uh, account and let us sign in as the tenancy user account and uh, let us open the cloud shell in that tenancy account. So now I have logged into my tenancy account and you can see that I have switched on the cloud shell and the cloud shell is totally ready. And uh, in tenancy account, you can see it shows the username as my email ID. And here it also shows, you know, the username, part of the username before, you know, as a prompt. Now let us close this. Uh, let us do a ls pd ls. okay you can enact policy update immediately by restarting your cloud shell so let us try to restart the cloud shell from our this one this here itself and after going there also let us try to restart this cloud shell because this is the same cloud shell we are going to use from that uh, account also from the newly created account also so better i restart it here then i'll go and check there if it doesn't work we have to re try to restart the machine from there itself they're donating this terminal and uh, they are you know so let us wait for it Then we pass the video and come back when it's restarted. So it is uh, creating the cloud shell again and attaching the cloud shell home directory again. Here you can see the network is public, right? So this is the tenancy administrator account. So it is already public connecting to your Oracle. Oh yeah, it's now restarted. You can see. Uh, once again, the prompt came from welcome cloud shell and it is showing here. Okay, so let us exit. Exit. Let me go ahead and click exit. Click sign out. Now we have logged into our uh, user account. And now let us go ahead and open the cloud shell. Yes, now the cloud shell is successfully available. OK, now cloud shell can now use either or if you trade easy, you can choose preferred architecture using the action menu. Now it is showing two options. One is for OCI service network, another for private network. There is no public network. Your tenancy does not have public internet access enabled because IAM policy and policy switch to private network 
or OCA service network. For more information, social private access. So let us go ahead and see what the document says about OCA also private without having to uh, having interfere. This is default mode, always access only to the home region or your tendency. Okay, so there these are the three things. This is the one we are looking for. Why public uh, network is not available for us? So let us examine: Is there any policy difference? Yes, this policy for public network is little different from what we have set earlier. So let us go ahead, close this cloud shell, and uh, let us sign out of this user account. Let us go back to the tenancy and try to set a new policy there. Let's exit. Press sign out. Let us go here and uh, log in into the tenancy uh, user ID. So we have to go to policy. Where is the policy? Identity and security in policy. Okay. Inside the policy, we have to choose this demo and policy and edit policy statement. We have given the allow group demo one to use cloud shell link tenancy. Now we have to add another statement to use their cloud shell in public. Cloud shell in public cloud. Control C. Okay. Allow group, demo group to use cloud shell, public network in tenancy. So let us save this. And uh, let us open the cloud shell here. As you know, they, what they have said, you remember, public I know, policies and security may take up to 24 hours to take effect for the existing cloud shell. You can enact policy update immediately by restarting your cloud shell. So let us try to restart the cloud shell from our this one, this here itself. And after going there also, let us try to restart this cloud shell because this is the same cloud shell we are going to use from that uh, account also from the newly created account also. So better I restart it here, then I'll go and check there. If it doesn't work, we have to re try to restart the machine from there itself. Terminating this terminal and uh, they are, you know. So let us wait for it. Then we pass the video and come back when it's restarted. So it is uh, creating the cloud shell again and attaching the cloud shell home directory again. Here you can see the network is public, right? So this is the tenancy administrator account. So it is already public connecting to your Oracle. Oh uh, yeah, it's now restarted, you can see. Uh, once again, the prompt came from welcome cloud shell and it is showing here. Okay, so let us exit. Exit. Let me go ahead and click exit. Now let me sign out of this and go into that tenancy, newly created tenancy account. Hmm. Friends, 
If you find our videos useful to you, then kindly take a minute and subscribe our channel and like the videos. That will motivate us to create more free contents. Thanks, friends. Let us continue our lab. Let us log into the account which has the problem. So, and let us check whether our problem got solved. This time inside this uh, multi cloud login. Uh, now let us click and open the cloud shell. With public network, it should. Service network, why it is in service network? I can use it in public network. Now it is connecting. Okay, it's now set. You can see that the network public is set and we can use it. Already the OCA service is the default on the private network. We can, so we can have the full access of Cloud Shell now. And uh, let us check the Cloud Shell. Okay, this directory, the directory name, the multi cloud is the directory which is given to us. You can't go back and work in the directory of the tenancy account, which earlier was. You, so anything inside this directory will uh, be listed. So whenever you find free time, go to multicloudrishi.com and try to practice the topic which you want. I'll be updating one of the topic uh, each weekend. So. Go to the topic which you like, go to the guided hands on labs and try to do the labs and make sure to check different exam certification coupons for free. So keep working hard, keep yourself focused, believe in God, keep smiling. Meet you in next video. Jai Shri Krishna.